Hello, everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Breaking Free with Coach Lizzie. God bless you. Happy New Year, everyone. I uh, hope everyone is doing well. Uh, this is a new year. We're looking forward to new things, new challenges, uh, new victories, uh, celebrating uh, your new life. And I'm praying and hoping that this year will bring you everything that your hearts desire. If you have not subscribed to Breaking Free, please do so today. Uh, we are um, an awesome family. We'll love to have you. So please hit that like button. Please hit the subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the bell notification. That way you'll be able to receive any of my uploaded content. God is so good, everyone. And I want you all to stay focused. I want you all to stay um, connected to God. I want you all to know that you are the key to your happiness. Well, again, welcome everyone. I have a new topic I want to share with you all today. Thank you for my old and new subscribers. If you are new today, we thank you. We welcome you. God bless you. And we hope that you stay a part of this Breaking Free family. Again, if you would like to email me at warriorqueen.55 at yahoo.com for coaching sessions or prayer, or you can go through my website at www.breakingfreenpd.com. My topic today is how the new supply is the narcissist scapegoat. The new supply is the narcissist a scapegoat. And you know what they say about a scapegoat? A lot of times these narcissists, and most of the time, these narcissists always have to find someone else to invest or inject all of their love bombing, all of their lies, uh, their betrayal, all of their wickedness, all of the deception, all of the smear campaign, the flying monkeys, everything that they have accumulated, everything that they have done to you, everything that they have tried to do to destroy you, they have ingested all of this in the new supply. The new supply is that pig. The narcissist knows that the new supply is like a sponge. He or she, whoever that narcissist is, in your life, that new supply that that narcissist have, they are a sponge. They are sucking up every single thing that the narcissist dis out. They don't care if it's a lie. They don't care if it's the truth. They think that they have won something. They think that they have gained a prize. They think that they have stolen your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your husband, your wife. They think that they have the best thing since sliced bread. The new supply doesn't understand that he or she time is coming. Because the mask of the narcissist is still on. They're wearing that mask well. The same way they wore that mask when they was with me and you. Even though I believe that the new supply see something wrong, but they can't pinpoint it. He or she can't pinpoint it. something is wrong with the narcissist. A lot of them don't even know that they are narcissists. A lot of times the new supply is a narcissist. He or she could be a narcissist as well. The new supply doesn't understand that all the pain, the sorrow, the disrespect, the disgrace, the lies, the manipulation, the gaslighting, the push pull, the PTSD, everything that these people have tried to push on you. The new supply doesn't understand that he or she is going to experience it as well. They are sucking up everything the new, the, uh, I'm sorry, the narcissists tell them. Because they just want to believe everything they say because you are the ex. You could be the ex-daughter, the ex-son, the ex-child. You could be the ex-co-worker. You could be the ex-girlfriend, the ex-boyfriend, the ex-husband, the ex-wife. You could be the ex on any point. But that new supply is going to believe every single thing that that narcissist tell him or her. They are not going to question what they tell them. They're going to actually just believe it because that's what they want to believe. They want to feel like they came in to be um, the person that came in to save the narcissist. They wanted to look like they were the hero in the narcissist's life because the narcissist told them that you abused them, that you abandoned them, that you never showed them any attention, that you abused the children, that you mistreated them, that you uh, did not value them, that you did not appreciate their hard work. They even told the new supply that you... <laughs> Uh, abandoned them and they were homeless on the street and they had nowhere else to go. So the new supply feels that he or she was the hero to the narcissist. But the new supply doesn't even understand that it's all a made up lie, that it's all deception. 
to be able to pull them in so that way they can be their new supply to fill that void in that space. So when they decided to discard you, they had someone already to fill that spot. Now, don't get me wrong. And I just want to have to say this. And it might not be true, but this is how I feel. A lot of times when the narcissist is a male, they don't discard a woman that is providing for them, cooking and cleaning, being there sexually for the children, taking care of the home and doing all these things that any man would desire to have in a woman in their life to just ditch that person and discard them without having another new supply or another woman in the background. No man is going to walk away from all of that if they don't have someone else lined up. They're not going to go without sex. They're not going to go without food. They're not going to go without a warm bed. They're not going to go without someone else that they can deceive. So to me, that's usually how it works when you're talking about the male narcissist. They're never going to leave without a new supply. The same way as a female narcissist. A lot of times females will just move on. But these female narcissists, they also have a background supply. They already have two or three men that they're uh, talking to or laughing with or having lunch with or they are entertaining, I would say. And so these people can never be without entertainment. They always have to be entertained. And if there's no one to entertain them, the narcissist goes out to find their own entertainment. And that is extra supply. Now, don't get me wrong. The narcissist can use their children as supply too, as well, because they don't care who they feed off of. A narcissist is like a vampire. They have to be able to drain and to suck from something. They got to have something there to validate them, to tell them that they're handsome or they're cute or they're pretty or they're awesome or they're the best thing that ever happened to them. That's what they feed off of. That's what they live off of. And the sad part about it is that the people that the narcissists bring into their lives under their spell, these people never really looked at the narcissists as being attractive. They never really looked at them as to want to be in a relationship with them. They went in and love bombed these people. They lied to them. They manipulated them. They paid their bills. They bought their lunch. They put gas in their cars. They was a stepdaddy to their children, a stepmommy to their children. They did everything they possibly could that they knew that the new supply was going to accept them and want a relationship with them. Even though they knew they had a husband, a wife, a girlfriend, a boyfriend, or a child in the background, they had to make that new supply feel that they were so unhappy in their current situation that they were the only ones that could understand them, the only one that can give them what they needed, the only one that they want to be with. That is such a bunch of crap and a lie. But as, as I said before, the new supply is like a sponge. It's like an escape goat. They're like that pig that the narcissists have to ingest all of the lies and filth inside of these people. And sad to say, they accept it. They love it because now they think that they've done something supreme. They think they've done something powerful by walking around and prancing with your daughter or your son or your husband or your wife or your girlfriend or your boyfriend. They're thinking that they have something on their arm. But little do they know, they don't know what they have, but we do. And so even though we were hurt the way that these people did us, we are happy to know now that God loved us enough to allow this situation to happen for us to be discarded. Not that God wanted us to be in pain or to be hurt or to be manipulated or to be manipulated. I'm sorry. But God knew that this person was not for you and me. And so a new supplier is going to soon find out that what they think they have is not what they think they have. They're going to start to be stressed out. They're going to start to feel depressed. They're going to start to feel drained. They're going to start to think that something is wrong with my situation. Why am I feeling a certain way? Why is this person a certain way? They're going to figure it out too, people. They will, family. They will. It might take days. It might take years. It might even take months. But I guarantee you that these new supplies are going to find out that what they think they got is not what they think they have. We have a dodged a bullet. We have escaped the rest of our lives being with these psychopaths, sociopaths, manipulators, and con artists. These people never loved you. They never loved me. They used us for what they could use us for. 
They know we were loving and kind and empathetic, compassionate, forgiving. They know that we had a high tolerance of abuse. And so they knew that we were God fearing and they knew that we were going to follow the Bible and do the right thing. And that's why we took them back so many times. That's why we didn't have boundaries. That's why we let these people run all over us. That's why we were walking on eggshells in our relationships and our marriages, because we want to have that husband or that wife or that girlfriend or boyfriend or that daughter or son in our life and to keep them in our life because we didn't want to go without them. But let me tell you, look how far we have come. And a new supply will finally realize what we went through. Now, they might never speak to you. They might never call you. They might not ever even talk to you about it. And that's okay. But we know that at some point, this escape goat is going to find out that that's exactly what they were, an escape goat. The new supply, you are an escape goat. New supply, you are and have been manipulated and bamboozled and tricked and deceived. That narcissist knows exactly what you want and what you need. That narcissist is mirroring you. That narcissist is playing you just like they played their former partner. And when you, New Supply, don't follow along with the plan, and when you, New Supply, don't follow the plan and you have your own way of thinking and your own mind and you start to a uh, 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 battle with the narcissist and when you try to uh, have your own ideas and have your own life and have your own plans these people are going to change on you when you start thinking in your own way and when you start challenging them and questioning them about their former relationships then you're going to see a whole nother side of your so-called best thing that ever happened to you But with that being said, family, we need to thank God that we have escaped. We need to thank God that he has removed us from these situations. Now, for some of those that have to be uh, around the narcissist due to co-parenting or due to children or maybe work status or they might be the narcissist might be in the workplace and you might have to uh, communicate with them or you might have to work with them. It could be a boss. It could be a child. It could be your father, your mother, whoever the narcissist is within your life. Sometimes we can't avoid these people, but you have to learn how to go no contact. You have to learn how to respond and not to react. You have to understand who these people are. Their mask is totally taken off. They know that you know who they are. And that's why they want to keep you away from the new supply. So the new supply don't get a glimpse or a whip of who these people really are. They want to keep you away from these people because they are afraid that you are going to tell them who they really are. They don't want you telling the new supply anything about them. They don't want the new supply finding out the truth about who they really are. They don't want you showing them paperwork, documents. They don't want you having phone conversations with them. They don't want you going on walks with these people. They don't want you having lunch dates. They don't want you having play dates with the new supply. They don't even want you and the new supply to get close as step parents or to co-parent because they know the new supply is going to eventually find out who they really are. And so I just want to let you know today that that new supply is an escape goat. That new supply is a sponge. That new supply is the pig that the narcissist is ingesting all of their filth inside of. Now, that doesn't mean that the new supply is off the hook. It doesn't mean that the new supply didn't know that that was your husband or your wife or your boyfriend or your girlfriend. And not that that new supply didn't know that, you know, uh, you were applying for that position and they tried to manipulate you and they tried to make you look bad in front of the boss because they wanted that position. They're not off the hook either. These new supplies, most of them will very well know And they knew that these people were married, that they were in relationships, that you were in this position uh, of a job or you were in a position of authority. These people knew this. They're not off the hook either. The new supply is not a victim. Now, for those that don't know the truth, that the narcissist lied to them, they didn't know that there was someone else in the background. That's totally different. But for those that did know that these people were married, that these people did know about that um, uh, supply, uh, the old supply, they are going to have to give account. So they're not off the hook. They will pay 
for what they allowed themselves to be a part of. They will pay for allowing themselves to be a part of destroying a family, destroying someone else's life, destroying someone else's career, destroying someone else's position or relationship with their daughter or their son or their marriage or their husband or wife. These people will give account. Now, it might look like they're having a wonderful time. <laughs> it might look like uh, they're having this abundant life. They might look like they're having this glamorous life on social media. And for some of you all, just like myself, once a narcissist left, I don't follow them. I don't look at their Facebook pages. I've never went back to look at anything that he has done or what he's doing. And they might think that you are. And for some of you all that are weak and, are, and, and can't help yourself that you have to go back and look, you're only hurting yourself because it's basically just a fraud. It's all a front just to make you jealous of the new supply. We need to pray for the new supply because he or she is going to go down that hill. They're going to go down that drain. They're going to be sucked dry. Their energy is going to be dry. But I want to tell you this. A lot of those new supplies are going to stay with that narcissist. And that narcissist is going to stay with that new supply. Even though they might be living hell on earth behind closed doors. You know why? Because they have told everyone how loving this person is and how God brought them together. And they're going to tell, they have told everybody how this person has rescued them and helped them and they've married them or they're dating them or they're in a relationship with them. There is no way they want social media to know what is going on behind the scenes. They want everybody to think and believe that everything is peachy and everything is going well. They're going to stay together. They're going to tolerate each other for the simple fact that they don't want no one else to know that this was not the right thing for them to do, that this was the wrong relationship, excuse me, or the wrong marriage or the wrong situation or, or, or entanglement that they have gotten themselves in. You have to remember this is all a front. This is all for show to make you jealous. There's nothing to be jealous about. There's nothing to envy uh, the new supply or the narcissist, because the Bible says don't envy evildoers. So if these people are in an adulterous remarriage or adulterous relationship or these people have come up against you and done you wrong, whatever your situation is with the narcissist in your life, these people have to give account. So I don't care how good they make it look, the lies they have told, the fly monkeys they have gained, all the people they have turned against you, they will give account. But what I want you to remember breaking free family is that you continue to stay connected to God, that you continue to love on yourself, that you continue to go after the dreams and talents that God has given you. Continue to stay in prayer, continue to move on in your life and to live the life that God intended you to live. And not only do you need to forgive yourself, you need to forgive the narcissist as well. Now I know some of you all tell me, Coach Lizzie, I'm not going to forgive this person for all the bad things they've done to me. Well, I just want to remind you that if you're a Christian, forgiveness is not an option. In order for God to forgive you for your sins, you have to forgive the narcissist as well. Now, it doesn't mean that what they did to you was okay. It doesn't mean that what happened is all right. It doesn't mean that you'll forget. No, you won't. But allow that situation to make you a better person. Allow that situation to open up your eyes to say, you know, that is something that I don't want to be. And that's the type of person I don't want to be. I feel sorry for the narcissist, not in a sorrowful way to the point where uh, I sympathize. No, I feel sorry for him and her because they don't really understand that they have to deal with my father, that they have to deal with God for the things that they have done, the lies they have told and the betrayals and everything that they have done. It is so sad that people will choose another human being over their eternal life and relationship with God. And so once your spiritual eyes are open, the Bible says spiritual things are spiritually discerned. So you have to understand what I'm talking about. You have to be in the spirit to understand that. So I'm not angry with the narcissist. I actually want to thank him. And I want to thank the new supply as well, because now I have an opportunity to be the woman that God intended for me to be. And God don't want me to have any distractions. He didn't want me in that relationship. He didn't want me in that marriage. That's what I wanted. And so that's what I ended up with. And so I'm not upset anymore. I'm not angry. And I never was bitter. And I never was jealous or resentful. But the thing about it was I learned was that how could another person claim to be a Christian and to do another person like that. That's what my biggest thing was. I think the betrayal was 
the hardest part for me, for someone to betray you and to use you for their own selfish gain and to move on and make up a lie and tell everybody that you was this horrible person so that way people don't look at them as the person that they really are under that mask. But when that mask fall off, you can't help but see the demon behind it. You cannot help but to see the fraud and the manipulator and the liar and the deceiver behind that mask. I want you to be genuine. I want you to be authentic. I want you to be happy, not pretending to be happy, but to be genuinely happy. I don't want you on the dating sites. I don't want you out looking for love or looking for someone to fill that void. I don't want you looking for rebound relationships because those are just extra pain. God is the source of your strength. Fill those voids with a relationship with Jesus Christ. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to Breaking Free. Thank you all so much for spending time with Coach Lizzie. Again, Happy New Year. If you want coaching or would like to donate to Coach Lizzie, my information is in the description box down below. I love you all so very much. I want you all to know that God loves you too as well. I want you all to know that no matter what happens, that God is in control. And remember that God says no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Now he said that they will form, but that doesn't mean they will prosper. And as long as your heart is right and you're doing what God has asked you to do, then you will be just fine. If you would like coaching, please email me at warriorqueen.55 at yahoo.com. Again, warriorqueen.55 at yahoo.com. Or you can go through my website at www.breakingfreenpd.com. Now, if you would like prayer with Coach Lizzie, prayer is free. You just email me your information, where you're from, and a phone number and request for prayer. I will call you and I will pray with you. But if you would like coaching, um, I do have a fee for my coaching sessions. You'll have to email me or go through my website to get that information. Now, I do have to update my website uh, on my coaching uh, fees. Um, thank you, someone, for reminding me uh, to do that. So I need to do that. But just give me a call and we can talk. We can pray together. We can encourage each other. We can uplift each other. But you will get through. And when you look back, you're going to realize how far you really have come. And for those who are subscribing to the channel today, we thank you. We welcome you to the Breaking Free family. God bless you guys. Until the next video, have a great day.